Hello everybody. Today we're going to demonstrate how to make use of the new HTML5 template element. The template element is used to clone HTML fragments using JavaScript. Okay, we're going to begin with the bare bones of an HTML5 web document. Mine is named HTML example.html. Yeah, see, yeah. Hey, inside of the body element, I'm going to put a template element. Go down a couple of lines and make sure I close the template element. Now in my script, what I want cloned is going to be an H2 element. And I'm also going to want a paragraph element cloned. And maybe we'll throw in an HR for a horizontal rule. So this is the HTML fragments that are going to be cloned over and over again. Now I'm just going to go right under the template element. I'm going to open up a script element. Go down a couple of lines and close up my script element. Okay, now I'm going to put an array into place. And this array is just going to represent some kind of dynamic server-side data that you're getting from your database or that you're gathering dynamically somehow. And inside of that array object is four JSON objects. Okay, directly after our array, we're going to access this template element. And actually, let me give this template element an ID and I'll just call it TMPLT for short. Now down in the JavaScript, I could just put in this line to get an object reference for that template element by using document.querySelector and then I reference the ID template or TMPLT that we just put here. So now we have an object reference for this template element. So now what we're going to do is create a for loop that's going to increment over this data array. Go down a couple of lines and close that for loop. We're going to create a variable called user. And you can actually define all of your variables above this loop. And I might do that towards the end of the script, or at least initialize them outside of the loop. So that variable user is going to be equal to the array and the i index in that array. You can see that the i is going to start with zero. So the first time this loop runs, it's going to target the first user with the name of Susan from USA. Second time the loop runs, it's going to target this next user. So the user just represents each JSON object as it comes pouring out. Now this next line, we're going to create the clone. And we're going to be using the clone node method in JavaScript. So we say var clone is equal to template element dot content dot clone node. Now we can simply use query selector all on the clone. So the first thing I want to do is get the H2 elements. I want to target those H2 elements. So this is the line that I'll put in place to do that. Var H2 is equal to clone dot query selector all H2 element. In the very next line down, I'll put H2 opening bracket zero closing bracket. And what we're doing with the zero there is we're just targeting the first h2 element that's in this template structure. So in this HTML fragments, there's only one h2 element. But if I had two h2 elements in there, I could target the second one by putting a one here. But since there's only one, I target the first one by putting a zero. So we say h2 zero index dot inner HTML is equal to user dot name and that'll go into the little JSON object and get the name property or the name attribute. So after you targeted your first element in the template structure and you've done what you want to do with it, you can give this a class name and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But you can style it easily by giving it a class name or just by targeting its style property. But the very last thing you want to do is put in template dot parent node dot append child clone. So you're going to put the clone into the body element because the parent node of your template element is body. See how the template is sitting right here inside of your body element? All right, so let's test this in Google Chrome or Firefox. For now, just test in Google Chrome or Firefox because Internet Explorer it's not compatible with Internet Explorer yet because Internet Explorer is... I don't know what's wrong with Internet Explorer, but it just doesn't work yet. So here it is in Google Chrome. So you can see it cloned the template structure and it gave us an H2 element with the usernames in them. And we have HR, uh, HR horizontal rules automatically populated in the template as well because 
the HR is sitting right here. So even though you didn't have to put uh, any reference to the HR element in your JavaScript, it still appears because the HR element is part of your template structure. So the JavaScript made no reference to that HR element. The reason why it came out is because we cloned the template's content using clone node. So this clone holds all of this structure. Now let's just do the same thing for the P so we can actually just copy these two lines and then right here we'll pop them into place. We'll change this one to say var P. We're going to target this paragraph element here. So this one will say var P clone dot query selector all P paragraph element. And we say P at the zero index dot inner HTML. And let's change that to say instead of username, we'll put user.country and user.age. So we'll access their country and age properties. Okay, this time let's run this in Firefox. And there you go. What you have is all of your data neatly structured into the template, the same fragments of code that are nested inside of your template element. Now let's go ahead and check it in Chrome again. So yeah, Internet Explorer is going to be the only browser, I think, that's going to have uh, issues with this element for a time. But that'll change once Internet Explorer catches up. Now, what you could do is, for Internet Explorer, you could make some kind of alternative script that would simply dynamically render all the elements that you want, like H2s and P elements, by using the document.createElement method and the clone node method is not uh, specific to working with the template you can use clone node for whatever you want but just remember that this would be generally used for data that's coming from the server dynamically well after the page loads initially okay so I hope that gives you guys some insight into using the template element to dynamically render HTML fragments into a document. We'll see you in the next video.